news broke that there had been an explosion. Eleven people lost their lives there. Things were much worse than anyone had expected. The fireball that was uh, engulfing the platform was something that I'd never seen before. There was an uncontrollable release of oil at 1,500 meter, 5,000 feet. The sheer volume of the oil coming out was tremendous. It was so disturbing to see that oil just spewing, spewing, spewing 24 hours a day. The oil slick extended as far as I could see. You know, most oil spills are like Pearl Harbor. It's this one shot smack. And you know, instead, this spill was more like Stalingrad, a battle of Stalingrad, in which you had this everyday siege. The big challenge was it was so deep. Uh, it was a mile below the surface. The pressure down there is incredible. Getting in the ocean is not easy. Getting in the deep ocean is particularly difficult. We're building the tools that allow the biologists or the geologists or the chemists to actually uh, uh, follow their research interests into parts of the ocean that might otherwise not be accessible. It's kind of pushing the envelope of experience of the oil companies. They're not quite sure what happens down there. It was obvious that we were going to be involved. We received uh, uh, some calls from folks at BP that who were uh, reaching out, if you will, to see what we could do to help them. One of the things we could um, offer to them was uh, some uh, measurements of the extent or volume of oil released into the ocean through the use of acoustic devices and techniques that had previously been used for uh, working at hydrothermal vents. Um, those are most often associated with uh, sort of vigorous uh, venting of hot water out of these uh, things that look like chimneys or, or undersea uh, geysers. Intuitively, or, or by looking at a hydrothermal vent and looking at the, uh, at the uh, Deepwater Horizon uh, blowout preventer on the seafloor, you could see some very, uh, very easy to draw similarities. Andy and I uh, uh, authored a, a proposal uh, that we sent to BP. They took that away uh, and then within a day or two I think came back and said that they weren't interested uh, in trying to do that sort of work, that they uh, had other priorities which um, appeared to be uh, related to controlling the well through the use of uh, containment structures and so forth. I was in an hour from leaving to go to Australia and it, it was the the director of the U.S. Coast Guard R&D Center uh, calling to see if uh, it was still possible to make these measurements. Uh, he said, well, I'd like to uh, ask you to stay in the country. Coast Guard chose us because they wanted an independent uh, uh, measurement. We felt that, you know, we have uh, this unmatched capability. We need to get out there. It's in the national interest. There really wasn't any question about whether I'd do it or not. We flew out to the site um, and took uh, these uh, acoustic sensors. Uh, there were basically two sensors. One intended to measure the velocity of the oil uh, coming out of the well, and the other to measure the sort of cross-section. If you know what the, how fast the oil is moving and, and how big the plume is, if you will, uh, you know, it's relatively straightforward to make some assumptions about what the volume of oil is. Initially, our, our estimate was, was uh, sort of an outlier. It was higher than everybody else's. Uh, there were a lot of sleepless nights because um, we had made these measurements uh, using a, a technique that had never been tried before and it was telling us something different from everyone else. Uh, we kept going back to it to see if we'd made uh, a simple mistake or if there was a, a fundamental flaw in our measurements, but we kept on coming to the same conclusion. Based on compositional analysis and the previously measured volumetric flow rate, I calculated the oil flow at 59,000 barrels per day as of May 31st and calculated a cumulative leak of 5 million barrels. Subtracting the collected oil from this total yields a net 4.2 million barrels released to the ocean. 
This estimate does not take into account flow rate change resulting from the riser shearing, the oil that burned prior to the platform sinking, or minor subsequent refinements in our oil composition analysis. These factors offset each other, and I therefore do not expect the 4.2 million barrel estimate to undergo significant revision. There was a lot more oil going into the ocean than anyone had thought. By establishing what the flow rate is, you can uh, understand uh, more about uh, the failure of the, the blowout preventer itself, as we had originally uh, suggested to BP, and also uh, it would help to establish a mass balance in terms of if you know how much uh, oil and gas is coming out of the well, then you can begin to identify where it's going.